this is Wealth Edit Wednesday. Thank you all for those who have joined. And Tiffany Martin is one of my favorite um, stories in Birmingham. She's just done such a great job with her cycling studios and there's more to come. So we always like for people to introduce themselves on here because I think no one tells the story as well as you. So tell us more about you. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, again, just thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to be here. Love what y'all are doing and just grateful to be a part of it. Um, so yeah, a little bit about my story. I um, so started Ignite Cycle um, here almost three years ago. We're celebrating our three-year anniversary in March. Um, and I'm originally from Seattle, moved from, I've kind of bounced all over Seattle, LA, New Orleans, Boston, and then here. Um, and been here for five years. So started out, um, I just need to, I'm sorry, just change it. There we go. I need a gallery view so I can see all. <laughs> um, so in terms of how Ignite got started, um, I think it kind of started back in, I would say college. I started working in gyms, um, just as you know, an extra sort of something for to make a little bit of extra money. Worked at um, Gold's Gym in downtown LA, which was a trip. Um, and I've always been really intrigued by gym culture. Uh, I think that it can be really complex and interesting. Um, occasionally toxic, sometimes incredibly encouraging, um, sometimes great community, sometimes um, the opposite. So that's always really intrigued me. But my passion was always in education. And so I graduated from college, moved to New Orleans to do Teach for America, um, which truly was my dream job. I got hired for that job November of my senior year of college and was like thrilled. Like, I'm so excited. I finally get to do what I want. And a year later, crashed and burned, unfortunately. Um, turned out it just, I don't know if it was fit or whatever it was, but um, 22 years old, felt like I had a pretty monumental failure um, and truly believed at that point, you know, zero life experience. I thought I was never going to bounce back. Um, and it did take a number of years to, to regain, I mean, much of a sense of self-confidence. So from there, um, I worked a lot of odd jobs. I worked for um, a Saints player for a little while. I worked in my church's back office um, before finally landing in something a little bit more permanent, working in operations for a startup charter school. So that was kind of my first little um, foray into startup life. Very interesting because it's, I mean, education in post Katrina New Orleans was just wild. Someone actually said to my husband, who was also in education and worked in New Orleans, that one year in New Orleans, in education is like two years anywhere else, um, just because of the stress and also that there's just, there's so much to make up for post Katrina in terms of education. So did, worked there for a number of years. And then my husband and I got married. Like I said, he was in education and it was tremendously stressful for both of us. And we kind of decided that one of us in education was at least one too many. Um, so he had the better job and, you know, a, honestly a more impactful job. So I left mine and started doing personal training. Um, just kind of getting back into the fitness thing, wanting to do something a little less stressful, something that I could really leave um, at work, hopefully, and loved it. I love, um, loved and love the, the potential impact that a person can have on, um, on hey Ryan, um, on the people around them and just like for something that can be so complicated, when it comes to whether it's, I mean, the, the least complicated is just movement, right? But the most complicated is like, well, what's keeping you from reaching your goals? Like what mindsets do you have that, um, that you're bringing into the gym? What, like, why are your goals what they are? Um, you know, judgment free, of course, but I think it's just so interesting, the stuff that we bring into these spaces where we choose to move. So <clears throat> personal training, of course, was like very individual, you know, you're working one-on-one -on -one with people, you really get to build those relationships. But toward the end of our time in New Orleans, I had, um, our daughter was born. Um, and then we moved to Boston for my husband to go back to school. And when she was six months old, I was working, you know, still doing personal training, but like managing a babysitter schedule, my schedule and my client schedule. And since we had this kind of natural change, the idea of continuing to do that, um, 
wasn't ideal because, you know, a client can cancel five minutes before and then you're still stuck with a babysitter. So wanting to stay in fitness, I started teaching group exercise. Um, I don't know, do, y'all, do you know body pump? So it's like weightlifting yeah. to the beat of the music. Okay. So that's where I started Good. at like, okay. a, what's that? They had it at the gym I went to and it was great. Yeah. I mean, it's so fun. And honestly, from an education standpoint, like it's this big national or international company. They're so smart. They have all, all these incredible resources. It was such a, a wonderful place to enter into the group fitness space. Um, <clears throat> so teaching group fitness, staying at home with my daughter, and then also writing for this mommy blog. And one night we did a mom site out at Soul Cycle. And I mean, you know, talk about a night that changed my life, took this class. I was legitimately at like eight minutes into the class, maybe like two or three songs in. And I was like, this, this is what I'm supposed to do like with my life. Um, so that was a Wednesday night, Thursday night. I found a local studio that hosted trainings Friday. I went and took two classes there Saturday. I started their training. Um, and that truly has been, I mean, up until recently, it feels like the pace at which Ignite has run as well. Um, So I taught there for a number of years. um, And then when I was pregnant with my son, moved to a different studio that was female owned. Um, The woman who owns it is like a year or two younger than me, super inspiring, just like such a powerhouse. Um, And I think that if I had not worked for her, I don't know that I would have had the confidence to start my own studio. So. We found out that we were moving to Birmingham and I started looking for a place to continue doing what I was doing, right? Like teaching cycling for me is, it's my me time, Um, which is interesting because it's like, you know, it's not your typical me time. It's not sitting in a bath or journaling or whatever, but like, I just love it. So wanted to continue teaching, looked for a place to do that. And there was no place that looked like the studios that I was instructing at in Boston. Um, And as I started thinking about that, I realized that in the back of my head, I had this whole plan for my own studio. So sitting on my couch, literally surrounded by open and half empty moving boxes, I sat down and I Googled how to write a business plan and got started from there, researched, you know, sound equipment and all of that. I had no idea how to, how to start or run a business, but, um, I really felt at the risk of being super cheesy, I felt called to do it. Um, There was a lot of prayer of like, if this is not what I am supposed to be doing, please slam the door in my face because I am so excited about it. I need like something loud and clear. And that never happened. So here we are. Um, So we opened um, March 9th of 2019. And it's been a wild ride since then. Um, we've been open now in COVID for two years um, and had we celebrated our one-year anniversary and then we shut down a week later. So it's been wild. But um, what I will say that's just been so incredible is going back to um, kind of the impact that that one person that an, a trainer or an instructor can have. Um, what we've done at Ignite is something that I am just tremendously proud of. Um, I think a lot of times when people talk about Ignite or even like going to our Google reviews, um, they talk about the experience, right? It's less about the movement and more about what they learn about themselves and, you know, learning how strong they are and um, not just physically, but also mentally. Um, And, you know, I mean, I've gotten DMs from people who have realized that they had the courage to get out of a toxic relationship because of, you know, experiences they had in the bike room. Of course, it's not exclusively experiences they had in the bike room, but they've, they've um, attributed some of that courage and that bravery to how they've seen themselves transform and the the efficacy that they've had in their own lives um, to making these big, cool decisions. Um, So that, that's, that's me. And that's, you know, where we are. (laughs) I just remember being um, at that little dinner party and that was the first time I met you and we were both about to start something and, you know, who knew what the next would look like. So, and here we are, and here we are, (laughs) we're still standing. Well, that is great. And you have another studio coming soon, right? Yeah. We'll be opening um, in Mountain Brook (sighs) the summer. 
construction yeah. right now is just so wild. It's like we were supposed to open back in like November. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, but that was, you know, even I think supply chain issues. Our office yeah. is supposed to be done in January was supposed to be done in March, was supposed to be done in May, and it just wasn't ever done. I mean, it was, we're in there now, but I can't imagine what it's like now. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. It's pretty bonkers, but um, but I mean, if I've learned anything over the last few years, it's just to like, you know, expect the best, prepare for everything, yes. and, you know, allow yourself to, to roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> tell me how you've built a team in my mind the fitness culture especially like it, this is just from the outside looking in from being like a member of orange theory or a member of a gym where it's like those instructors kind of move along pretty fast like how how do you build a team in that environment or has that been a challenge it's a great question so um our our team building our team and retaining our team has actually been one of our strongest um the strongest I can't, I See that it feels like from at least what I see online, it's just that y'all really have you've sort of figured that out in a way that a lot of other fitness places haven't. Um, thank you. That's I'm glad that that comes across. Um, so I think from the beginning, it's it's always been about culture. I have seen my role as like the culture builder. I'm sure that there's like a great corporate name for that, but I was never in the corporate world. So I don't know what that is. Um, but I have a, um, a studio manager who is like there for the in, day in, day out, the operations, all of that. I of course handle the back end stuff, but, um, but culture comes first. And I always put my team first, um, you know, especially when it comes to like issues with, with writers. I'm going to my team first, asking them what's going on. Um, and I've always got their backs first. Mm -hmm. um, but then beyond that, I, I do think there's a huge investment on the front end um, of being hired as an instructor. Our front desk team is a little bit different, but again, we've had great um, retention there. Yeah. But as an instructor, we require that you've written 15, or excuse me, 50 times before you can even audition. Mm -hmm. And then once you go through the two-day audition process, um, then you go through an eight week training and then an internship after that. So there's a level of investment, I think that goes into, um, that both goes into from our end, all of our instructors, but then the, the emotional, physical and time investment that they put in is enormous. And I think you can't, you can't go through that and, and go through all that it takes. Like it is challenging. Our training is physically really, really really taxing. Um, and then emotionally it is too. I mean, it's, it's so funny. Um, now that we've, we've gone through four rounds of training and our more veteran instructors can, can know, okay, like it's week five, like we need to go check in with these new people because they're yeah. broken down. Yeah. So I think just on the front end, the training is huge, but then we continue, like we get together, we try to, as our team's growing, it's getting to be a little bit more challenging, but um, have events together. We have a photo shoot on Friday. Our team loves a photo shoot. It's just time for oh. us to hang out um, and have fun together. Uh, so I think just, you know, spending time together, making sure that we're all getting along. It's a lot of big personalities. Um, you know, it's part, part of the job you have to be have kind of a big personality, but, um, we're able to manage it well. Yeah. Well, I love how you said, and this is what I think, especially for members of the wealth edit, because there are those stirrings that you get, like yours came in that cycling class at soul cycle. And, you know, everyone, I think you have those little moments in life where it's just, you're stirring and to just hear you go and say like, yeah, let's do it. You know, I mean, I think that's what, um, my hope for women is because, you know, there's some crazy statistic and I don't have it memorized that like, you know, only 50% or maybe it's even less, like maybe it's like 30% of women apply for a job if they don't have all the credentials where it's yeah. like 80 or 90% of men. And like, I just, I, I don't know if there's some way just that we can flip that messaging where it's like, yeah, maybe it's not a perfect fit but it's going to work out, you know, or it'll, it, you know, nothing's going to kill you from going to an interview that maybe you're not qualified for. You'll learn something. Um, 
I don't know, or start something, just start something new. That's what I try to do with every woman because there's only 14% of um, client facing female advisors. And I'm like, just go and start. I mean, just do it. Yep. If you, it's not really failure is so temporary. So anyway, exactly. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I think, so I just saw it. It sounds like the research that you're referring to, but I saw it in meme form. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> that it's like, <laughs> um, women only apply to jobs when they meet 100% of the qualifications men apply yeah. when they meet 60%. Yes. And it's like, like we need to listen to those little stirrings because, you know, I do believe those are from the Lord. And I think that, you know, we've, it, it, we talk ourselves out of things more than we talk ourselves into things. And if we could switch wow. that, it would, who knows what would happen to the world. Right. And it really is like the, the, what's the worst that could happen mentality is I think really helpful when you actually go there, right. When yeah. it's not rhetorical, when you're like, wait, what actually is the worst thing that could happen? Like I could get turned down from this job interview. My right. business could, and I still, especially after going through COVID, but I felt like this from the beginning, my business could crash and burn at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Would that be traumatic and awful? Mm -hmm. yeah. But also like we recover, you know, and, and at this point, like we will have had a great impact on people's lives. So yeah. <laughs> And that's how we actually came up with a course that is open to members called the comeback theory, because I was sitting one night with a friend and we were just talking about how, like, we, like when, th when the bottom falls out, which is going to happen to 95% of women from a financial standpoint, like 95% of us are going to end up as a financial head of household, whether we want to or not. And it's like, when that happens, or when you have some, you lose your job, you lose your spouse, you lose, you know something that you were hoping for something happens with your children that you weren't expecting it's like that is actually the moment like after it's already gone where it should be like risk on like what is the next brave thing that we're going to do with our families with our lives whatever that is because you've already lost everything like if you can just go there and say like okay it's already gone you know so like <laughs> now let's see what's next yeah. you know it's so freeing yeah so, well, that's great. Well, and tell me, okay, so we've talked about team building. T tell us how you've kind of grown or how important is it for you to grow from like a social media standpoint? Like how do people hear about you? Or is it really word of mouth, like culture building that way? Both. So mm -hmm. I would say our two biggest places are social media. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't advertise a ton on social media. We wait until we do like big stuff. Yeah. Um, actually advertise it, but a lot of it is word of mouth. I think what we do is inherently kind of intimidating, mm -hmm. um, you know, dark room, loud music. It's going to be hard. Like nobody shies away from that truth, right? It's mm -hmm. going to be challenging. It's going to push you. Like there are a lot of barriers that a lot of people are going to put up, um, between, you know, hearing about us and actually booking a bike. So I do think, <clears throat> The, the vast majority of people that, that come to us come with a friend or because of a friend um, mm -hmm. because they'll hear, well, okay, yeah, it's, it's hard, but like, it's so fun. You know, yeah. Sometimes I forget that I'm working out, <laughs> that kind of thing, <laughs> I think is, is really helpful more so than, than us, you know, sending you a mailer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell me this. So, so women in our like thirties, forties, like our bodies change a lot, not for the better on us very quickly. Like, how do you kind of talk women through, I, Im I imagine that's your demographic or maybe it skews younger, but like, what would you say to like an average woman who's, you know, body is turning on her day after day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. I just, and total jump in, in age, but I've had this conversation with my mom a lot recently, um, because she's, she's really like disliking her body, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, it doesn't do what it used to do for me. Um, and then I watch her like run around and play with her grandkids. And I'm like, but look what it does, you know? Um, and I think that that's, that is the conversation that we're having at Ignite the most, right? Is um, the refrain, thank you body. Yes. Comes up. I mean, I say it multiple times in one ride. Um, the other side of that is that at the very beginning of every single ride, um, our writers here only do what feels right for your body. Um, and we're going to cheer you on. No, like no matter how you're moving, if for 45 minutes, you're, you're just there catching the vibes. Great. Sitting on a bike, moving your legs. Like, thank you, body. 
thanks for showing up. Thanks for clipping in. Thank you for moving. Um, it's, it's not about something it, it's about whatever it wants, whatever you want it to be. Um, so I think in terms of speaking to, you know, changing bodies, like, gosh, like it's a body that we've lived in for 30, 40, 50 years, and it's gotten us this far, right? What, like, if you have kids, like carrying and birthing children, like, thank you body. Like you did that. And maybe, maybe you are a little more tired now, right? Running around chasing kids or get, I mean, getting up and going to work and sitting at a desk, that's hard work. You know, of course, maybe your body is a little more stiff, um, but that's, I mean, I think there's so much to celebrate in that. And I mean, the other thing that we talk about all the time is like there for 45 minutes and all day, every day, and when you're sleeping, um, but 45 minutes on that bike room, your heart is beating and it's adjusting to that, the intensity of the ride and your lungs continue breathing and you don't even have to think about it. I find that just so amazing. Um, and that really is, I mean, I think that through the challenges of our bodies changing, there still is so much to celebrate. That's a good, that's a really good word. I mean, because right now, like what I'm sitting in, in Colorado and um, watching the Winter Olympics and watching these people like spin up in the air and like just whack their knees, you know, like it just is yep. like they're just <laughs> killing their knees, but they seem fine. And I'm like, I'm going down blues and greens and my knees hurt. Like why? You know? <laughs> to me I'm like this is unbelievable but um, <laughs> and for those of us that live in the southeast it's like we don't get 70 ski days a year you know so it's right. like I tell the difference in yeah. my body from ski from one time skiing to the next just because it's like a marked period of time but right. anyway that's funny oh, gosh, but, that's really funny I can yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like how do you do that how do you do that I can't do this um <laughs> Well, that is great. Well, before we wrap it up, and if anyone has any questions, then let me know. But um, we're just so grateful that you're here. There was so much about your story that resonated with me that just starting up, the fact that you were able to build a team that culturally has this sort of cohesiveness. And it sounds like you put a lot of thought and time into how people even enter the team. Um, they always say like, you know, what is it? Hire slowly and fire quickly. And hopefully mm -hmm. no one has to ever fire anyone because it's a, it's a terrible feeling. But I think that there's just so much that you have done well through Ignite and that you've built thoughtfully, slowly, carefully through a pandemic, you know, that's so not easy. And I just love that you've done all this, Tiffany. It's such an inspiring story. And I know that there's so much more to come. Um, I would love for you to tell me, so you've been a member and advocate for the Wealth Edit from the beginning, and we do not take that lightly. We are so grateful to have you as part of our community. So tell me why you said yes to the Wealth Edit. Yeah. Um, you know, I think two reasons. One is knowing you and wanting, and wanting to support you and knowing like your heart for women and your mind for finance, like, I want to soak that up. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. But beyond that, personally, I, I feel like I, my education in terms of finance is lacking. Mm -hmm. And to be able to be a part of a group of women who are more knowledgeable for one, but also curious um, is invaluable. So I'm so grateful that, that you started this and that it's going so well. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> but, um, and we really did think like five women would be interested in our nerdy self, you know, I mean, that's <laughs> and all that we have to offer, but it's been so fun to build this little tribe of women and it's really become across the Southeast. And we're going to, I hope you attend, we're having a great event in April, April 22nd through 24th. Um, so mark your calendars numbers, cause it's going to be awesome. Maybe we can figure out a way to put ignite in there somehow we'll we'll figure it out we love it so thank you for your time today i appreciate it so much and um and we'll talk to you soon okay thank you so much for having me lauren Great bye bye